Now, ladies and gentlemen, here to give the most famous words in motorsports, welcome contest winner, Johnny Fink. On behalf of the race car fans everywhere, gentlemen! trying to go for a championship seven former nascar next l cup champions in the field 12 drivers in the field who have won here at lowe's motor speedway none more though than jimmy johnson on the outside of the front row ryan newman hasn't won in 75 races right behind him the king richard petty's car with bobby labani aboard he hasn't won 138 starts here they come two by two fans on their feet Sit back and enjoy, folks. NASCAR, next up, Cup Racing at Lowe's Motor Speedway, underway. Way up high, Dale Earnhardt Jr. said, so that's my groove, and I'm going to take it early on. Well, he just dusts him off three wide on the top side of turn two, heading down the back straightaway, and didn't think twice about that corner being slick or nothing. David Rudiman in the wall already right off the bat. Rudiman trying right, to hold it up there, hold it up there, hold it up. Entering Calamity Corner, you heard us talking about it. I thought that was too early to be getting up in that groove. Especially with Jim Jr. back there too quick, and then here Rudiman follows him up there and gets in the wall. Oh, man, I tell you, you really Sorry, Frank, nervous. I just drove in there and tried to just come around. It's just so difficult to get going here on these cold tires. Andy, he was almost in the tracks of Earnhardt Jr. Earnhardt Jr. didn't slip, but he did. But his car was just a little bit freer than Jr.'s, and that's how he got up there. Back at Lowe's Motor Speedway under caution for the second time tonight. One of the uh, top rookie contenders, David Reagan, having trouble with his Ford. Roush Fenway car number six on lap 21. We'll show you what happened to David here just a moment ago. Pretty tight racing right here. Oh, didn't know that 41 was out there, I bet. No, I just didn't see it coming. If I was a spotter, I'd have been hollering right now. He's an outside, he's an outside, but he might have been doing that. This stuff happens awful quick. You close the rate of closure. As you're coming to that start finish line, you've got your fastest part of the racetrack right there. Kevin Harvick just radioing in. They think they have a right side flat. He came in on that pit stop and took right sides. They think it's going down in the crew chief. Todd Barry are telling him, hang in there. We're going to get a caution. Hang in. And you see him dropping back one position at a time. They, they've had this happen to him already in the chase. You heard Jamie talking about Kevin Harvick, the troubles he's had. He is on pit road now, slowing down and headed to his pits. Jamie. And indeed, he is coming in. He's in now for right sides only. It was a flat. He said he felt it. They went through this at Loudon. They had not one but two flats. They were set up back in the chase. Right sides are on. He's down and we got Harvick in the pits again here. Must not have had the, must not have got the right tire that was flat, and may have another problem. Yeah, this team just got lapped again. They're two laps down right now, and they've been way off the pace. Jamie. Well, Kevin Harvick made the call. He said the car's just not feeling right. They think it's the left side now. So he told his crew, "I'm coming in. We need to get these tires off. We need to get new right sides and new left sides." Little drama on Matt Kenseth's radio just in the last minute and a half or so. He came on the radio, said, we're blowing up, guys. Robbie Roger, the crew chief, answered, you're kidding me. Then they, they told Matt to switch batteries. He flipped the switches inside the cockpit, came back on the radio, said, this battery's good. Apparently, they have an alternator problem. We'll follow up. Kenseth running fifth now. Well, Matt Kenseth came on the radio to his crew chief, Robbie Reiser, during the caution. They had a discussion about what to do about the problem. We'll let you listen in. We can take a little wedge out for a little, you know, half a turn in the right rear or something. Might be one thing that might blow it up. Here you go. Ah, uh, you got to be kidding me here. Hold on. Stay low. I don't think we'll make a little race, Robbie. Um, I don't know if I can make a little race without breaking the doors either, to tell you the truth. I'll try, but uh, it's going to be hard. So you see Robbie Reiser down 
top of the pit box, making the plan with his crew about what they'll do if they have to change the battery. Further conversation with Matt and the team. Matt was told from the moment he switched to the backup battery, he's good at race voltage for 170 minutes. Now that's a little shy of three hours. So what they're going to do is try and keep the electric fans for the brakes off as much as possible. Every now and then, Matt's going to switch back to the old battery that was run down when the alternator first failed to try and get some life out of that. And they're going to see how long they can nurse this to keep from giving up all their track position by having to come in and make a lengthy battery change. Right behind him, the 24 car. Whoa! A little contact from Gordon in the back of the eight car. Sort of moves him up out of the groove, and Gordon goes right on by. It looked like he was going to try that bottom lane right as Dave finished up with that. And then when, it, when he did that, his car didn't get through the corner very well, and the 24 got into it. Well, they're, pre, they're future teammates. Right? Well, the thing I'm thinking about right now, his father, Dale Earnhardt Sr., told, told Dale Jr., don't take any crap from anybody. I bet that eight car catches that 24 and pays it back. Here's what happened a moment ago. Watch the eight pull down in the bottom groove. That eight's not doing anything wrong. That 24 just didn't get out of throttle and gave him a whack in the back of that car. That 24 knows I can run him back down after about 30 laps. Speedway trouble for one of our chase contenders and one of the top cars here tonight. The 17 of Matt Kenseth. Hard contact into the wall. Alan, what happened? Matt had come on the radio since the restart, Doc, and talked about being way out of control with the back end of the car. He's talked about uh, possibly having a problem. Now he's called in and said he thinks the right rear was going down for that spin. The car being so loose, meaning the back end is out of control that he can't drive it. And uh, so Matt Kenseth's day has gone from bad to considerably worse here. Just a few laps earlier, watch the 17 car. Got a little sideways in the corner. Man, Jason. Whoa. Well, he, that is big loose right there. Looks like he might have started feeling something right there. It looks like the right rear tire's still up, though. Now watch him just trying to hang on to it here. And this one, it was just no way of catching it. That's right up there at the Exeter turn four again. Let's follow along here with him. Looks like he's starting to get loose as the car goes towards the flat of the front Got straightaway. Got Stay on it. On that break. Oh. Wow. In the straightaway, he almost had it saved. He spun it off. This is a big hit for Matt Kenseth. And a gutsy move already being made by Greg Zipidelli. Fuel only on the 20 car. And a near collision on pit road with Tony Stewart and Paul Menard. And Everybody's trying to pit. Tony's in and out. These guys are trying to get in their pits. And, and then you think that's bad. Here it comes again. Tony's like, I feel like a pinball out here. This is unbelievable. I think my wheel's actually all right, bud. Also. Now the big question is how much damage on the right front of that 20 car. See, they finally get Casey Kane's car in the pits, and now Tony gets his refired and pulls away. Going to be a stop for Kurt Busch and his crew chief Pat Tyson warning him about incoming traffic to keep him from getting torn up on pit road. That's, uh, that's the problem with that first pit stall. You get in there and get your work done and you're coming out while these other guys are still coming in. Look at Jimmy Johnson. Remember that 48 car, how many times he's been out to a lead in this race? Now he's back in traffic and struggling. All these crazy strategies on pit road are trying to set themselves up to be able to go to the finish on the fuel and tires they have to be up front in clean air. That's what's going on down here. We'll see who gets it right in a little bit. Andy, if you're a good crew chief, you better be a pretty good chess player. You got to be thinking way ahead on what's, what, what's going to happen over the final couple of laps. You got to start at the end of the race and work it backwards a little bit on these moves to know where you need to be. And, you know, this you're seeing Jimmy Johnson fight this traffic, and that's not because of his last pit strategy move. It was the one before that where they got four times. This last time they got two tires, but they're still got back down the back. Oh, J Jimmy Johnson spins around in the 48 car. Loops it around, has some damage. It looks it like just got the right, right rear bumper. Couldn't tell. Back in traffic, trying to work his way through. Chad Cadals talking to his driver. We saw Jimmy Johnson spin last night. Right, let's get ready. Let's get our hammers ready. The right rear is bent up just a little bit on the right side. What we got to do is we got to flatten it out. Flatten that spoiler out. Get four tires on. Let's try to get it back here so we don't lose a lap, Jimmy. 
chased him off of turn two. Not bad, man. We're going to be fine. This We're going to be fine. exactly what happened to him last night in the bush race. He said last night, just my fault. He said, I didn't mean to do it. He just spun the car out last night in the bush series race. Like you said, Andy. But the thing that's different right now, he's not tore up too bad. And I really like how calm Chad Knauss is on the radio. He can fix it. Be calm. And they can fix this thing. And they can get it back in. With 103 laps to go, there's a lot of time left. These kind of moments can cost you a championship or can win you a championship. You hear how poised and composed Chad Canals was. Listen in. Close up any gaps that we can. Are you ready for that? This is the thing. All right, clear out, Ron. Clear out. Clear out. Clear out. Go, go, go. Just recover from something like this. And that's what a championship team has to be able to 4, do. 4,000. Tough luck here. The 43 car is slowing down for Bobby. Oh, man, that's too bad. Had a great run going. As is the 66, Jeff Green. And we got a car spinning up in turn four. That's Johnny Sauter. And, boy, this could tighten things up quite a bit here as caution comes out for the 14th time with just 13 laps to go. And Jeff Ford's thinking, I cannot believe this. I got such a big lead. And now i got to race my brains out again. And Kyle Busch is loving this part. Green's left. Here they come, five car underneath the 24, 24 car must be sputtering. And take a look at Ryan Newman, he just checked out. The five cars on the 24, the both got slowed down. And Ryan Newman said, adios, I am out of here. Well, Newman up the wall, in the wall, the 12 car up across the racetrack. And tags the wall with three yeah, blue left to rear. go. Oh my goodness, he just ran the fastest lap of the race the lap before that. Wow, he was digging for it. Never has won here. Wanted it so badly. And three laps to go. The car just abruptly snaps over in turn two. All right, guys. Left side. Left side. Time ready. Let's go. You can't accuse Ryan Newman for not going. For it's junk, Mikey. Gordon suddenly slows. You hear him say the thing's running out of gas. It sputters. Watch the 12 car go around the outside and just take off. And the five car, he's just too loose on the bottom to stay in the throttle. He can't get the momentum going. Ryan Newman pulling away. Now Gordon chasing him. Three laps to go in turn two. Now watch the 12 car just snap sideways. Man, it looked like he was gone from here, and then all of a sudden it just went away. It just wiggled just a little bit and took off. But now what do we have? we got a car leading the race that may be out of fuel. We've got the 48 of Jimmy Johnson on pit road. He comes down to try to get some fuel. Can't take a chance there. There's Jimmy. Got to change some right side tires. And what about Jeff Gordon? On the flat. Uh, this is a bad thing. If you're running on the flat, it means you're picking up all the debris on the apron. But it's his only choice he's got. The pickup is in the right rear corner of these fuel cells. And if he's on the bank and the fuel's going to run away from it, the car's going to try to die. And so is Kyle Busch. Yeah, we see his teammate doing the same thing. Exactly. So these guys are worried about fuel. Jeff Gordon will lead him down. Does he have the fuel to get up to speed? Rocks Boyer. He knows that Boyer may not have a lot of fuel. Which way does he go? speed watch the five car how much fuel does he have as well looks like gordon gets a lot better restart this time even he doesn't know how much fuel is in the tank is it going to sputter here comes the 31 car burton who won it last night in the bush competition from the back of the pack and he make it on field jeff gordon's right, got white flag white flag for jeff gordon one lap to go does he have enough Unbelievable, this car trying to run him down, but doesn't look like Gordon's going to have a problem. His car is stuck good. He's got a half a lap to go. It's been since 1999 that Jeff Gordon has been able to come home and win at this racetrack. He has not finished a race in three years, but folks, tonight, Jeff Gordon wins again at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Bro, he's got a horseshoe up their butt, but keep it up there. Great job, guys. Woo, that's awesome. Tried at the end there, had a run going. Yeah, he spun the, he spun the tires, and, uh, you know, I kind of backpedaled a little bit and got a good run on him, and I just, uh, 
you know, I didn't pull it down quick enough. I, he slipped, and I was gaining on him too fast and got into the back of him, so going underneath of him. But, uh, you know, nonetheless, um, this isn't my best race, Jack. And uh, Gil and all the guys, uh, they brought me a good hot rod. We went and tested this car. I got a lot of confidence in it and got a lot of confidence in these guys. And uh, we ain't out of it. We're going to keep going. We're going to get Jack Daniels championship. Jeff Gordon, the long, dry spell. Just finishing a race here, not since October of 2003, but that's all over. Jeff Gordon got his first ever cup victory here at Charlotte Motor Speedway at Lowe's Motor Speedway. And tonight he comes through victorious. Jeff, what were those final moments of that race? His beautiful wife Ingrid here. What were those closing moments like for you? Well, I can't tell you how many times we tried to give this one away. Uh, Oh, man, I don't know where to start. You know, uh, just an incredible day for the DuPont Chevrolet team. And uh, I got to thank all these guys. I mean, they just never, never gave up, you know. And Jimmy Johnson, I'm not sure what happened to him. You know, he had us all covered. And uh, when I, I saw they had problems, you know, I thought that was an opportunity for us. We had an awesome race car. The best car, uh, the best the car was all night was, you know, there towards the end. It was just on rails. So, uh no, I just kept saying, no caution, please, no caution, no caution. And I saw oil uh, coming on my windshield. I saw the 66 was leaking it. Everybody's going everywhere. I knew the caution was going to come. And then the thing ran out of gas. Um, I was having trouble with the pickup. It was on the banking, and all the fuel was running out of the pickup. And I wasn't smart enough to know to go around the apron the first time. And then even on that last one, on the restart, the tire spun so bad that uh, Clint Boyer, he could have gone right by me, and uh, he gave me a big shot in the rear bumper. And it kind of got me going again. So uh, this is what we've been looking for is getting us a win at Charlotte. What a great comeback. And uh, I don't owe it all to those guys right there. Steve Retard, all the guys on this team. Everybody at Hendrick Motorsports, engine department, uh, chassis, we're here at home. So uh, we got to thank all those guys and all the people that, that work so hard right here locally. And NASCAR's backyard, Doc, he takes home the victory for the second week in a row.